My friends, what's going on? So a bit of a different video for you today, right? I'm gonna change my strings and I'm gonna do it without any edits, without any pretenses of hiding behind expertise of being a guitar technician, which I'm not, right? Uh, I change my strings once every three, four, five months, maybe. And uh, you know, there's some things I feel comfortable about. There's other things that I'm nervous about every time. You know, the string breaking in my eye. Am I doing this right? Am I not carrying for the fretboard properly? Right. So what I want to do in this video is sort of change my strings for you in real time. No edits. Uh, I'll show you about how long it takes. Should be about maybe 10, 15 minutes. And if you want to get a feel for what it's like in the event you've never changed your strings or you haven't done it in years and years and years, and you're kind of just putting it off for some reason, um, you know. This is a video for you, right? There's tons of videos online that show you polished, well-produced ways from you know super guitar experts who own 20 guitars who do this all the time. Uh, this is not that, right? This is more honest. This is my only guitar. If I mess this up, I'm kind of in for a trip to the guitar store to get more strings, and I don't want to do that, right? So again, I'm gonna go through the process, and uh, hopefully you take something away if this is what you're looking for. I will ask though, if you are a guitar technician, a expert at the sort of care of these things, please be kind and let me know any feedback you have as far as uh, opportunities for uh, ways I can be doing things better. All right. So with that said, let's get into this. And um, again, this is going to be a leisurely paced, honest video at real in a real time, real time pacing of things. Right. So let's get to it. OK, so I'm going to stand up now because that's more comfortable. Um, for context, I'm in my kitchen right now. Here's my guitar. I took the strap off. It's otherwise in normal shape, right? It's tuned up. I haven't done anything to it yet. A bit, a bit about my sort of situation right now. Um, I like to get comfortable, right? What I typically have been doing recently is I get this blanket out. This is just a brown blanket. It matches with my kitchen table, which is nice. I put that down just so I can put my guitar down on the blanket and it's not clanking around. Okay, um, I think getting comfortable is a good way to make something that is a bit of a, you know, I don't look, I don't look forward to changing my strings. I love having changed my strings, but you know, this, this blanket helps if that makes sense. The bongos here, kind of a weird thing. I got these for college, uh, for, for birthday when I was in college. Thanks mom and dad. I think I was 20 or 21 years old. I still have them. This was just something I grabbed off the shelf. I really, um, I like to prop up the neck a little bit because if you don't, what happens is, you put it down here and it's still kind of a little bit wobbly. Not the biggest deal, but it kind of gives you a weird angle when you're working down here at the, the top of the guitar. So I'll use this to hold it up. I'm sure there exist proper hardware things you can buy that will prop your guitar up. I don't own one of those things, but if you can recommend one, please do that. So otherwise, it's get comfortable. That's sort of my first rule, right? The next one I would say is um, get out all your supplies. Let me show you what I use. So what I bought about a year and a half ago is one of these things. Uh, it's like a little plier, scissor things for your guitar. I used to own one many years ago, then I lost that and I got by without it. But now I picked one up again. Totally worth it in my opinion. Now this one is a bit, um, it's multifunctional. It, it, you know, this little thing right here will cut the strings, which is good, right? Um, you also have a little, I don't even know what this thing is for, but there is uh, this thing up here, which will help wind the, uh, you know, wind these a bit quicker, which we'll get to. And then also for taking out the pegs down here, maybe that's what this thing is for. Sometimes I use this. Um, in general, it's a handy tool. You can get the pliers separately from these winders. I used to have this orange winder that I would use. So whether you get a single purpose multi-tool or you have a bunch of little ones, I'm not an expert to say, but, but something to cutting the strings is good. Something for winding these quickly is good. And something for getting the pegs out is good because all those are kind of things which are a bit of a pain in their own different ways, right? Um, I do have the strings. So I'm using elixirs. These are elixir, uh, acoustic, of course, Fons, Phosphor Bronze, Nano Web, uh, Light. So um, the gauge is light. Uh, 12, I believe, is the thinnest string. 53 is the thickest. I have no idea what that number means other than like a lower number means a thinner string, I think. I don't know. Um, now, rich, full, and smooth, like a nice coffee from Colombia or Ethiopia or something. I don't know. Strings are this weird thing where... Uh, I feel like it's like with wine for me, you know, you describe a wine to me on a menu, I look at six different ones, they all sound, they all have like attributes that sound good to me. Um, maybe my taste buds aren't that developed. The same thing with this, you know, rich, full and smooth. When I'm in the store and like the other ones have other descriptors which sound equally good, I'm like, which one do I get? I don't know. 
Um, I typically go for elixirs, and I have no good reason other than when I first started playing guitar, um, elixir was one of the first pairs of strings that was recommended to me or that I got, and it's just kind of one of those brand loyalty things. Um, I can't tell you why I recommend them. I think their branding is good too. It makes me feel like they're a high quality string, which I don't know if there's any truth to that. Now, um, here we go. So in the back here, I can, I can show a picture of this. We have like, you know, the tone and the feel. So there's, there's polyweb and there's nanoweb, and then there's the 8020 bronze, the phosphor bronze, you know, warm versus rich and full versus bright and focused versus, versus slick and fast, smooth, smooth. Again, um, I don't, I, I'm not like familiar enough with the feel of different guitars to be able to describe what those mean in real terms. But anyway, what I'm using here are these strings, just uh, let the record state. I also have this stuff I bought at the guitar store a while ago, right? It's, um, it's lemon oil for the fretboard, Dunlop. So this is one of those things where like, I'm always afraid that I'm not taking care of my guitar properly. I've had this thing like looked at, tuned up over the years. I've had this for almost 20 years now. So um, it's done me pretty well. I think I brought it to the store two different times in the past 20 years to be like, hey, is there anything wrong with this? Does it need to be tuned up? Can you do a proper clean, a proper tune up thing? Um, seems like it's in good shape, uh, but this stuff just probably for something I saw on YouTube or on the internet told me I should get it. So I have this stuff, my supplies. I have a rag. This is from a freshly retired t-shirt. This is going to be to help get some of the dust and gunk off from those weird places you can't normally get, right? And then what else do I have? Finally, I have a tuner. Okay, this is a clip-on tuner, uh, seven bucks, eight bucks. If you don't have one of these, I totally recommend it. I went um, maybe 15 years of playing guitar without one of these, but it's a uh, fantastic investment in my opinion. So then I have a pick, of course. I also have an iPad, and your phone could suffice here, right? The reason I have this is later on, I'm gonna get to this, this like string diagram thing, which I always run into, is like, how do I do the string part up here again? Uh, I know which way I should be turning it in the long run, but like, how do I do that initial knot? I always forget and I have to look it up because I'm paranoid I'm going to do it wrong. I don't want to do it wrong, okay? So uh, there we go. Get your supplies out. Get your guitar set up. Get comfortable. I also have a soda here. Sparkling water from Austin, Texas. Talking makes me thirsty. All right, so let's get to changing these strings. The first thing I typically do is just uh, loosen things up. So this is where I could get my um, little string dewinder thing. Uh, I don't really bother typically, because this is pretty easy. Pretty much I just do a quick uh, winding of things to get them down and low and loose, right? Now, um, one thing I wonder about is changing all the strings at once versus just changing them one at a time. Um, I've heard someone say that, uh, you know, if you unloosen up all the strings at the same time, that can be, that can like sort of release pressure that's bad for the guitar, because a guitar needs that tension. I don't know if that's uh, true for this guitar, if it's true for all guitars, true for some guitars. Um, I will say I just like taking them all off because then you can clean things a bit nicer, right? So, kind of do this for all the strings, that's the next thing I do. Now, what's next? Um, I gotta take these out and I gotta take these out. Um, I could cut the strings as well. I don't know if I typically do that. I feel like I don't. Maybe I saw that on YouTube once. Um, so I'm not really sure. So next I'm gonna do the thing where I, let's see, I'm gonna get the pegs out. Now let's see what this thing is. Does that do anything down here? Uh, this is one of those things that I am like, I risk embarrassing myself. I mean, I sort of gently try. Let's not mess with that. So basically, I'm going to be very gentle in my guitar here. See, this is one of those things like, I don't know if I'm doing this the wrong way. Okay, so just be, be gentle is my sort of motto of the day here. Don't lose the pegs, right? Uh, kind of, I don't want to harsh up the, the guitar here. Let's see. That one came out. Uh, da, 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 da. See, I don't like that. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. So this is where, the, if you know how to do this better than me, please speak up. The, er, the ergonomics of this thing are weird. Like I can't do it sideways because it would go down into the guitar, which makes me think this thing might have something to do with it. Um, yeah, so I risk looking the fool here, but again, I'm gonna, well, there we go. This feels kind of good. It fits around it, but hmm. Yeah, see, 
Yeah, so again, I'm being honest about this. This is one of those things that I feel like I'm not necessarily doing this right, but you know, here I go, just the same. Okay, there we go. So it sort of felt it loosen up there. That's two out of six. Pull it out. Yeah, definitely let me know if you are um, any more of an expert on this part than me. Let me know what I'm doing wrong here. If there's any better ways to do this. Okay, coming out a bit easier now. I'm sort of using this side of this thing, right? So that way I have some, some leverage Put it on there. Five out of six, and here's the last one. All right, so those are out. I think these are the pegs I've had for a long time. I don't know if I've ever gotten these changed. I don't know if I should. If I should, let me know. Next, um, let's see this part up here. So, um, starting with the thickest one, I'm just going to sort of unwind it a bit and get it out. There we go. All right, I got one. This is one of those things where I'm never sure what to do with it. You know what I mean? Because the thicker ones, not really an issue because you can't lose those, but those thinner strings can be pretty hard to see. You don't want to have little remnants of them laying around. So, number five is out. Number five, the fifth, fifth, uh, the fifth string. Let's see here, uh, number four. Riveting, riveting entertainment, I'm sure this is, but it'll get fun in a minute here. So this is down to the third one. Yeah, so I do this, how often do I do this? Um, probably not as much as I should. Maybe every three, three months, maybe, give or take. Sometimes more often, maybe. But honestly, sometimes I probably go four months, five months too. Um, I'll say that the, the when do I decide to change my strings? Well, I kind of notice with my playing is that some of the strings will start to buzz or they'll just feel kind of gunky or they don't ring as well. And that's the kind of benefit of changing them at all free with it with any kind of frequency is you start to like get a sense for that um, that sound and that feeling of fresh strings. And uh, it's good because you notice it. I mean, it's probably like coffee. When I first started drinking coffee, I was a couple of years out of college, first desk job kind of thing, and my boss at the time, I remember, he would he would kind of laughingly kind of give me a hard time about preferring flavored coffee, like the heavy hazelnut stuff that was available in the kitchen, and it tasted good to me. I didn't know any different. Um, and after, uh, it's been, that was almost 15 years ago, now I can sort of tell the difference between just like, you know, your base, your base kind of regular coffee, and then the stuff that's like flavored out of the gate, right? Uh, so it's kind of the same way with tuning a guitar, or not tuning a guitar, restringing a guitar. You know, you restring it, you get the fresh strings, they feel good, clean buzz, or clean um, ringing sound, whatever. None of that gunky buzz, none of that dullness, right? And uh, that's the kind of thing you get used to. So if you haven't changed your strings in a while and play your guitar with any frequency, uh, it's worth doing. Now, I have everything off here. A couple things I'm going to do. One is just take this this rag and sort of give a nice wipe down to the areas that I can't normally get to. So down here, where the pegs go, just kind of giving it a nice wipe. I didn't really, I didn't put anything on this rag yet. I'm just kind of doing it um, a straight wipe here. I don't do anything on the inside of the guitar. I don't know if I should. I have a pickup on this guitar. Um, it was installed after I bought the thing, but I haven't really used it in years and years and years. I don't. I have an amp, but it's a really, it's not the best amp, and uh, I live in an apartment now, and noise is kind of something that I'm always sensitive about making too much of, you know? So I um, haven't used this in a while, but the, the pickup controller thing is right here, and there's like a battery thing. I can do another video on that one day when I have something to say on that. But um, yeah, I don't do any maintenance on the inside of the guitar. So this is me just doing a, just a simple wipe down those areas you can't get to when the strings are on. Again, I don't know if I'm missing out on something I should be doing. Let me know if so. 
And then next I'm gonna do this uh, lemon oil stuff here. Okay, so I shake it. Uh, the instructions say remove string, shake bottle well, apply a small amount of ultimate lemon oil parallel to the frets. Using the Dabomatic in applicator, a little goes a long way. With a clean cloth, work dirt and grime free and wipe away any excess oil. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. Now, uh, let's see, kind of, yeah, I can see it there. Do, da, 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 da. This is where I, I don't know if I'm doing too much or too little. So if you know, please let me know. I'm just gonna do those first nine frets and kind of let the rag carry the rest of the weight, okay? Um, so I take my rag here, and if you want to see what this looks like right now, just a little, you know, the dots of the oil are on there. And I'm going to sort of wipe this down. Nice, makes it look like it's uh, kind of dark, you know, which is cool. Um, it's kind of like neat looking at the frets here, because you can see the wear and tear that they get especially those first couple frets. Um, lots of uh, lots of grooves are worked out in the frets. And I asked the guitar guy at the store one time about that. Should, you know, should I get the frets replaced? He told me you can get them replaced, but it costs a lot of money to do so. And it, you know, it's okay, you don't need to do it just because they're, they're there. So let me get a quick video of this with the iPad. The video quality of this thing won't be great, but it might be um, worth looking at, especially if you haven't seen this in a while. So let me go to video mode. I'll keep it in uh, portrait so it'll look nice next to me here. So basically, you kind of get this, you, know, you see the, uh, the little grooves right there, right? This is not the best camera, admittedly, but, um, sort of what it looks like, you know? All right, uh, enough of that shot. Now, um, swipe down, that's pretty good. Next up is for the strings. Okay, so let's get those out of the, out of the box. All right, so what I'll do here is take these, put them here. Now, one thing I like to do if I have a Sharpie, I usually always have a Sharpie on me, is um, today is May 7th. I'm just going to write that on the box to, in a perfect world, um, help me remember when I changed the strings and what strings I used. I've done this in the past and I haven't always remembered to do anything with this. Or maybe I'll take a picture of it and I'll, I won't remember to look at my phone. But I'm trying here. So um, let's go through this. I typically always start with the thickest strings first. So it's going to be the highest number, right? 53. Um, I'm going to put the rest down right there. Carefully get it out. All right. I get it out of there. Now, uh, what I do first is. Uh, I'm going to put it in the sort of hole down here, with the peg. Um, I don't know if there is a best practice technique with this part, to be totally honest. Sometimes I remember watching YouTube a while ago um, about this. But uh, I'm just being honest, doing what I'm doing here. I'm going to get these all in here first so I can just do all the... the um, the part up here together, right? Before I do anything else, let me take these extra strings and move them off camera out of the way so I don't get confused. All right, I'm back. And let's go to number 42, the next one. Again, I'm not sure if it's best to do um, one string, do it down here, do it up there, and then do the next one on both ends, or not. If you have any advice there, please let me know. Kind of pushing down hard here with my thumb and pulling straight up at the same time, just to make sure it's tight. One thing I ran into early on uh, when I was a 
more of a beginner guitarist doing this was I found that if you didn't get these in snug down here, you would you would get them tuned up here, start tightening them, and then this part would pop out, right? So I'm still sort of paranoid about that. When I eventually do start doing the tightening, part of me is always pushing these pegs in to make sure they stay nice and uh, firm. So the next one is 32. That's the fourth string for me. Um, yeah, so I use, uh, these are light, right? Um, custom light, extra light, super light, whatever the different levels are. Um, for some reason, I had this weird thing where when I started off, I was like, I want medium strings because medium like felt like more manly or something. And then it might also have to do with the fact that um, the first guitar I ever got was an electric. And my, uh, it was, you know, not the, not an expensive guitar, I don't think, but the, um, the strings felt very, very, very light. Like you could just move them all way too easily. And I think that that kind of turned me off at the time. When I got into acoustic, I, I like the more, the, the, the increased muscle requirements, right? So I think that that put me in this weird spot of um, preferring, at least in my head, preferring the idea of like strings that were thicker in gauge, right? Medium or whatever. But in reality now, when it comes to the practicalities of learning bar chords and learning a song that requires all bar, all bar chords, right? You can get really tiring to play. And it's like, man, sometimes I just wonder if those uh, the light strings are actually okay after all. So I got light this time, but I've seen extra light, custom light. I, I, I don't know. I know that like when as you go lighter, this number, the 12 here, will get lower and lower. So these are lights. We'll see how they do, okay? And maybe I'll make another video one day. The next time I restring the guitar and uh, report back on the feeling of everything. So this is the second string. I kind of like doing everything um, of this one part all at the same time. You know, you kind of get into a groove and uh, lets you just focus on that one task before you move on to the next part of the guitar. So I, I want to be careful here. I'm kind of having trouble untangling this. And this thinnest string is probably the easiest one to, you know, crease or whatever, whatever the term is for string kink me you, you get like a hose you know okay there you go so random guitar string trivia which i read on the internet was in jurassic park when uh the t-rex is coming in the first jurassic park the best one they're in the car and they, they hear the footsteps and the little kid timmy he he uh he hears it and he's looking around and they're kind of just waiting in the rainstorm and he looks at the water and you see like the the ripples of the water my understanding is they tried all kinds of things to make those ripples, you know, like hitting a table or just bumping into the car. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make ripples, but they would kind of be deceiving. My understanding was how they did it was they tied a guitar string on the bottom of the guitar, but bottom of the car between two metal pipes or something. And they just plucked it. And that's what I read. I hope it's true. because It's a really cool story. It made that perfect ripple sound. So that's my guitar string trivia of the day for you. So I got all these in here, all six strings are ready to go. So the next part is gonna be up here tightening them. Now this is where uh, I go from thickest to thinnest. This is where I need to go to the iPad every time or my phone. And I have to look up images like this one, right? Or like this one. Because I can never remember what like the, the direction you do at first and then you know, how all that works. So. What I'm going to follow are basically these two images. I'll, I'll put them in the video here and uh, put the links in the description of the video. Because I think I've done this enough times recently where I kind of remember how to do it. Because at first when I would change my strings in earlier years, I would just put them in and wind them, wind them, wind them. They'd be tight. It'd be okay, right? But I try to do things right. You know, there's so much good stuff on YouTube. Um, it's a good resource. Here's what I'll say, though, is um, I kind of try to get the whole pretty much being like um, the whole, each of these knob things, you know, being straight, uh, kind of parallel, or not parallel, but like facing the uh, the string, uh, where the string's coming from here. So I'm putting the string through, typically what I'll do, and again, this is not a how to change your guitar strings, definitive version. This is how, sort of how I do it. 
put it through, and then I'll pull up a few inches. I tend to wish I pulled up more. So I'm gonna go up about, you know, this much here. And then the counterintuitive part is even though I'm gonna to wanna to turn this away from the middle, the first turn, the first uh, direction the string is gonna go is towards the middle, and it's gonna go under, under the string, okay? And then I'm gonna pull it towards the middle again and sort of crease it over the top of the string. And I hope I did that right. Now here, so you, I, you see a good like four inches there. Maybe that's too much, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna use this to help wind things. Because the winding, I want it to go fast here. So I'm pretty much gonna turn this so that it is winding down, or it's winding uh, away from the middle. Oh, I think I need to keep it, yeah. I need to hold it there so that the string stays. And then, yeah, then, so now the string is, gr it grabbed the thing that went under. I don't know, I can't really explain this. And again, I'll do this again one day when I have a better camera set up with a closer zoom, and I can have a bit more confidence about what I'm doing. But here's the deal, is once you get it in there, You want to be mindful of this, be slow. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. It's good enough for now, right? Um, okay, it looks like I got about two lines there. It looks pretty good. Um, at this point, honestly, I'm going to cut the string because I feel like it's, it's, it's not, I'm always scared to cut it. Because I'm like, well, what if I messed it up and I have to do it again? I think if I messed it up, it would have been messed up by now. You know what I mean? It's in the right hole here. I tuned it the right way. Um, I think we're in good shape, so I'm just going to cut it. And this is one of those things that I, if I'm doing it wrong, let me know. So I cut it. There's maybe a centimeter of string, if that, coming off, which I hope is okay. Again, if you're an expert, let me know. So that one's good. Let's go to number five now. Hopefully this should continue along. One thing I'll say about guitar strings is that um, it depends where you live. Hopefully you live in a place with lots of options. I moved to Austin, Texas a couple years ago. And uh, the good thing about Austin is there's lots of music stores because it's like a live music place, right? And that's good. A lot of music, uh, music stores are good because that means you can, you know, there's a there's a bunch bunch near me. There's um, Guitar Center is two miles away. Then I have Straight Music, which is maybe three miles, four miles away. That's maybe my favorite. Then there's like South Austin Music. There's there's so many within five miles of me. It's, it's awesome. Um, but I noticed that I don't know how this works. I'm not like I'm not a retail expert, but the strings that they carry at different places seem to be different. I don't know if that's because of, I don't know why. Same with picks. Like for example, Guitar Center's pick selection isn't that good in my opinion. They only sell baggies of picks, whereas at Straight Music they have the bins and you can, you know, feel them out and everything, which I think is really important. So um, if you live in a place with lots of guitar stores and you're not like in the app, the, uh, the string selection at one store, maybe check out a different store, because it might be better. All right, so I'm tuning it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm turning it, I'm turning it. Yes, I am tuning it, kind of. Um, just make sure I get it over the thing there, get it into its little notch. And then it's important you do this, in my opinion, because you don't want it to get too tight. So now here's one of those things where it's like, how tight is too tight? One thing I do is just, that's my thickest string. So this one should be, it's okay if it's, so that's maybe like, you know, a second above, half step above. Okay, let's get it above the sixth one, but not too high, right? Because we, we don't want it to get unnaturally high because it will break eventually. So, Nice dissonant sound there. Um, and let's cut this one. Da, 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 da. That sounded cool. 
All right, I'm putting these here and um, looks pretty good. All right, that's two down, four to go. Okay, get that distance. Turn it towards the middle, nice and tight underneath. All the way under and now fold it back over and press down okay and then now take the winder and uh, tune this puppy so if you're watching this and you know anything about baritone guitars let me know because um, back uh, in college it was a really big Dave Matthews fan and he released an album I think it was Original. It was at first the Lily White Sessions. It was eventually called Every Day. But I remember in all the pre-album stuff, it was talking about how he played a baritone guitar and it used thicker strings and had a deeper sound and all the chord shapes were different. And really what I think that means is, I could be way off here, is that like a D shape on this guitar, on a baritone guitar would make, you know, like a different sound. Just like on a ukulele, you know, a D shape on a guitar will make a G on a ukulele, something like that. But I'm curious, like, how thick are those strings? Are they harder to play? What's their gauge? How's that work? If you know, let me know. I'd be curious. All right. Um, see, it only went around like once or twice. I feel like I, part of me wants it to go around so many more times. It's just so much more satisfying. So maybe on these next strings, I'll lift it up even higher. I'm not really sure of the best practice there. But this seems like it's in there pretty good. And uh, let's cut it. Cool, good to go. Halfway done with the strings. Okay, third string here. Now we're gonna be on the other side of the guitar. This is always a part where I'm afraid I'll mess up because I have to reverse everything. So get the knob just right. And if you are an expert at all in guitar maintenance and you know about these knobby things and should I ever get these changed or tuned up? Sometimes when I like, they're loose, there's no strings in them and I feel them, they feel like a little bit wobbly. You know, not the, not like the, the screw in part, but more like the knob that tightens. I wonder about that. If you know if that's bad, let me know. It's never an issue when I'm playing, I don't think. It's more like, a, I expect these to be more like perfect and not wobbly. Maybe that's just the... I don't know, we'll see, who knows. If you know, let me know. So here we go, let's try this out. So at first, I'm gonna turn it the opposite opposite way. So it's towards the middle, go under the string and then pull it over the middle, press down. Okay, now hold it there, make sure it's firm there, grab the winder. And then uh, windy, windy. And this is one of those things with the winder just makes your job so much easier. Okay. This is an awkward position here. Uh, let's see how we're doing. We have a lot more winding to do. These thinner strings are not my favorite, to be honest with you, when it comes to tuning. There you go, you hear it. Now, the few times I have broken strings, it's always been the, the, the G string or the B string, I think. So I'm always worried about those two. That looks good for now. We're gonna cut it. All right. Now we're gonna tune them all up once we're all in, right? But we have two more strings to go. Now this is where the, the thinnest two strings on a steel string guitar are, I don't know what the material is, but these are like, 
they have the, like the grooves in them. These strings are smooth, no grooves. And I find that they're a bit trickier to handle. Not handle, I mean, it's not that bad, but you know, when it comes to some of this, you have to look a little bit closer because you don't, you don't get as much feedback with your fingers in the same way. So I'm gonna put it through, give myself some slack. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it away from the, I'm gonna turn it toward the center. It's also hard changing these last couple strings because you have other strings on the guitar already, which I don't like. All right, and then you're gonna go over. Okay. Cool, make sure we're good down here and then get the winder. And then uh, let's see, tune it and make sure I turn it so that it's uh, turning the right way. I want the string going, sort of making a wide turn away from the middle here. Get it in the sound hole or the groove, whatever that groove is called, get it in the groove. Ooh. that. See, these sounds are scary, man. It's like a horror movie. So it's funny, you, you, you pluck it and you feel it, or you hear it, get looser. Da, 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 da. I'm not sure if that's too high or not, but I'm gonna leave it in because I think I think we're in good shape. And get this out. And it looks like it went around a couple times. It's good. Let's get the clippers. Hope you did it right. But hey, at the last five, ten times I've changed my strings, I've been pretty good. Um, one time I tuned, I turned it the wrong way. Like when when you tune your guitar. You know, you turn it this way, this way, this way. And then I noticed like two times ago when I restrung these two strings, I must have turned them the wrong way. So I had to like, when I'm tuning, I had to, every time I tuned thereafter, I had to, I had to turn this a certain way, the opposite way to tighten it, which felt weird, but it still worked. Okay, so now for the last one. Okay, let's see here. Change this hole. If you have any strings you recommend for next time I do this, please let me know. You know I like the elixirs, but if there's something else you recommend, give me a recommendation. I would love to hear. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Turn it oh, uh, towards the center, I think. And then go under and then push it down. And then get the winder. And I'm glad we're almost done because this part always stresses me. I think maybe you're supposed to keep the pressure up here when you turn. Let's try that. I wasn't doing that last time. I'm afraid I'm doing it wrong. I guess that makes sense. Maybe that's why, hmm, let's see. So I'm not using the winder right now, just because I want to really um, pay attention to this tension here and make sure that I'm not messing up with the slack. I almost feel like the last one, I gave it a lot of slack like I'm supposed to, but it just felt like it winded way too fast. So will this make a difference? Let's find out. So let's start plucking. Yeah, went around three times. I don't know, man. If, if you know about this, let me know. That tension thing, I never know. I feel like the way to get good at this, the real way to get good at it, would be just do it, not only do it a lot, but if you had multiple guitars and you're kind of doing it more often than you need to. Like if you worked at a guitar store and it was your job to do this, 
you'd probably get really good at it, right? It's kind of like um, drinking whiskey or bourbon or wine or anything that a lot of those things I don't drink a terrible amount that often. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, part of me likes the idea of doing the flights or the tasters and have someone explain to me. But the problem is, like, you can only drink so many in one sitting. And I might not only do that once a year or something or I, whatever with, like, a flight of, of, of whiskeys or I'm at a wine tasting. I don't really do that much at all, honestly. But I wish I did it more in the sense that the part of me that wishes I could learn about wine or beer or whatever, that would be the way to do it, right? Same way with, with changing guitar strings. When you're only doing it every three, six months, you kind of slowly put it, build up the knowledge, but it's um, it's hard to keep it, you know? It's like when, every time I move, I put in new blinds, for example, and um, by the end of the whole blind installation process, I feel like I'm ready, man. Give me blinds all day, I'll get them done. I'm so efficient now. I have the whole, all the routines down, but then I don't do it again for like five years. And then it <laughs> takes me a while. Okay. So now the good part is these are in. So we're going to, we're going to tune this up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm, um, I'm all cut up here. All the, all the trims, all the strings are trimmed. I'm going to put my tuner on and then I'm going to start uh, playing the, uh, playing things. See, so I'm just going to read off what this tuner says. So I'm at D right now. I'm going to go higher. So ideally, what's going to happen is you're going to be close to an E with a low note, right? You're going to be E, maybe you're an F or a G, slightly above it, or you're going to be E or a D or a C, slightly below it. I'm at D, so D sharp. I'm going to go higher, go to an E. Now, I have it perfect. Let's get it close to perfect and just stop there. Because what's going to happen is the string is going to get looser. They all get looser once you start playing them and then you have to retune them. And they play, get looser again. You, re, and you, re, yeah, you, re, you play it, you retune them, you go through that process, right? F, I need to get this to an A, right? And here's the thing too, is if you're um, changing your strings and you're not familiar with, um, oh, I feel like I heard something down there. So this is one of those things where when I'm doing this this first part, I like to almost keep a hand down on the pegs just to make sure that when you tighten this, if you have a loose peg thing down here, you don't want them to pop out. So kind of just be mindful of that. So G sharp, A, okay, so A. Like for example, this might pop out a little bit. If that happens, you want to, I guess, push it back in, push it back in hard, right? And if you have to loosen the string, push it back in really hard and then retighten the string slowly, you know? So I got the A tuned up. Uh, what I was saying though was, if you're new, if you haven't tuned your guitar in a while or haven't done your strings in a while, you want to memorize what the different strings are, the the different tunings, right? E, A, B, G, B, E. You gotta have that memorized, in my opinion. If you can't memorize it, that's fine, but write it down. Have something you can reference. B. Okay, really, uh, it's low. Actually, maybe that's high. Okay, this is a conundrum, right? A, that's good. B, um, I feel like, I know the next one should be a D, but my worry is, um, what if I'm too hot? What if I overshot the D and I'm way high at a B? I don't think I am, but. One, one thing we can do here is use the fifth fret test. Okay, so because the fifth fret, meaning if you're gonna tune a guitar with just the frets, the fifth fret on the low E string, should equal the open A string. Okay, good enough. The fifth fret on the open A string, or the A string, should open should equal the open fourth string. Way too low. So that means I'm, I'm under, I'm low, which is good. I'm, you don't want to be too high. If you're too high, the strings will break, as far as I understand. They're not going to break if you're too low. Okay, be mindful of the peg. Be paranoid a little bit. So I'm almost there, C sharp. All right, D, good. Again, um, doesn't have to be perfect at first because they're gonna get out of tune like crazy once you start playing it. So just get it good enough, get it close enough. Okay, this is a C. Let's get it up to, get up to a G. Actually lower it. I don't want it to be too high. If anything, I want it to be a little bit low. OK, 
Okay, next one's a B. This is where I get really paranoid, these thinnest three strings. So I have my right palm of my hand over the peg, kind of using my thumb to pluck the string. Going slow here. Low B, low B, low B, and then perfect. Oh, too high, too high. I lower it. Okay, B. A little bit sharp. Okay, perfect, B. Now the last one is an E. Pass the B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. All right, good. Now, that's an E major chord, and it already sounds out of tune. That's okay, though. Kind of... I don't know what the best way to do this is, do some bar chord shapes. I'm kind of like pressing these strings in and kind of stretching them out. I want to get them loose. Because the whole idea is you're going to have to retune. Now I tune it all again. D sharp. Okay, I'm going to do the pegs again because I'm paranoid. E. Okay, good. G sharp up to an A. Good. Very flat B up to a perfect D. Good. Uh, flat G. Not, so, not too flat, up to a perfect G, good. Flat B, up to a B, not too, not too high, not too high. Good, and then the E. All right, we got an E, okay. Whoops, that's wrong, that's not a chord. There we go. Let's get a pick here. Posture is very awkward here because of the way the camera is situated. I want to be on frame. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, E is good. A is flat, now it's good. We've done that three times. I think we're getting to a place where we're a bit closer to where we need to be. Um, we can almost call this a day. So let's play a little bit more, right? Just play some stuff. I think that bar chords are gonna be your friends here, right? You know, where you're playing all the strings. play Rodeo Clowns by Jack Johnson. No, I'm, I'm doing the wrong strumming pattern. If you're interested, this is C sharp minor seven. The F major seven, uh, F sharp seven, to A seven, and then G sharp seven. Sweeping the floors, open up the doors, and then up the lights, getting ready for the night. And nobody's romancing because it's too early for dancing, but here comes the music. The reason I'm playing that is it, um, again, it's a bar chord, it's using all the strings. You want to stress all the strings out, right? You want to not stress them out, you want to give them some, some reps, right? So F is a good, you know, I like the uh, David Bowie um, Space Oddity, right? C, F, G, A, A, right? Just doing these full six string bar chords. Pushing them in and pulling them down. The thinking is that'll sort of like loosen them up. 
You just want them to be in a good spot before you, you call it a night, right? Let's do one more tune here. Flat a little bit. And perfect. A. Little bit flat, but really close this time. Perfect. D. Really flat, uh, really close, but nearly perfect. G. Oh, just almost perfect. Right? A little bit sharp. Turn it down. Okay. And then B. And perfect. And then E. Man, so this time, so that's like the fourth time I've done this now, all right? You get the strings on there, you tune it up to what they should be. You play the guitar a little bit, blah, 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 blah. Then you check them again. They're going to be really flat. But you get them back up, play a little bit more. They're going to be a little bit less flat. Tune them up, play it a little bit more. And that, that last time, they were like almost there. So I think now... Doesn't sound... That, that low E string sounds like sharp. Oh yeah, it's way sharp. So that sounds now. Now, if you're an expert on tuners, sometimes I wonder if a chromatic tuner is not not like, not like true. I don't know. Is a freshly strung guitar like? in some ways, tripping up a chromatic tuner? Or am I just a rookie? Yeah, otherwise... So then you can enjoy your fresh guitar. Now, um, I'm still in the tuning mode right now. I haven't cleaned up yet. I'll say this, is that what I like to do is get as far as I just did, then I put my guitar away, I clean up. I get everything back where it should be. Then the next time I play my guitar, I do it like normal. And then usually after that session, I consider it kind of like ready to go again. I'm not a guitar expert though, and I don't know if that's like a rookie way to think about it. But uh, I'm excited to have my guitar tuned, right? The thing I'm working on right now is uh, some John Prine song. I'm not in the mindset of uh, performing a song right now, to be honest. I'm just happy these strings are tuned up. So that's going to be it for this video. I have no idea how long it was. I hope the camera is still recording. That's my paranoid fear with these videos. Is sometimes I do a long session. I don't know if it's still working there. But uh, thanks for watching. And again, I just wanted this to be a, um, a restring in your guitar at a natural, honest pace. No edits or anything, right? So I'm done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang this guitar up. I'm going to clean up, and then um, I'm going to probably practice later tonight and tomorrow and get on with some recording, some lessons like I normally do. But uh, again, if you've watched this far, you're, very, uh, you're a fan. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, most people tap out, and um, again, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any tips at all, please let me know, because I want to get better at this, but it's one of those things where I'm always like kind of embarrassed about what I you know, may not know. I don't want to ask because I look like I'm not an expert, but hey, I'm not an expert. I'm not at all. I just, uh, I enjoy playing the guitar. Um, I've been pretty good about restringing it regularly. Maybe not regularly enough, but I am doing it. And I just wanted to share this with you to, uh, to show you what it's like. But that's going to be it for tonight. Thanks for watching and uh, until next time. Bye-bye.